Some Pharisees approach Jesus and test him, saying, It is lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever. He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and say, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh? Therefore, what God has joined together, men must not separate. They say to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wife. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, a marriage another commits adultery. His disciples say to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they may so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this out to accept it, the gospel of the Lord. This gospel presents us an issue that has always been current and conflictive, always, ever since the beginning, so much so that it is not the Pharisees with whom Jesus is arguing, who confront Jesus, but his disciples who do not understand him. I don't know if they don't understand and don't accept it, but they certainly do not understand it and tell him so. If this is so, if we cannot get divorced, it is not worth it to get married, because that was the normal thing to do, not only in the pagan world, it was the normal thing to the Jewish world. Besides, the initial question tells you everything. To divorce for any reason was stipulated in one of the very numerous Jewish laws that were not only liturgical, but also culinary, what could be eaten or not. If a woman burned the food, the lentils were cut in the fire because she distracted or had put too little water, the husband had the right to divorce her for anything, for any reason. Of course, the wife didn't have any rights. The husband did. Not the woman. The woman was the victim. The woman had to put up with it. The man was the one who could decide it, whether or not to divorce her. Jesus breaks with this custom and says clearly that in the beginning it was not like that. It was not God's will. He corrects Moses. He say, he recalls Genesis and say that in the beginning God created them male and female, not men in a hundred and one other sex. No, male and female. He rejects the Jewish custom by confronting them, scandalizing his own disciples. Us today, the same us today. Because today, too, and surely always, there are disciples of his who consider it an abuse, an exaggeration, something impossible to accept that the, the church does not allow divorce. But this is a law of the Lord. You can choose to be a Christian or not. What you cannot choose is to be a Christian in your own way. You can choose to be a disciple of Jesus or not. But what can you but what you cannot do is to let these parts of the gospel that do not sue you and remove them or interpret them in just a way that they are empty. The Lord was very clear. He that divorces his wife, or he, her husband, and marries another, or another, commit adultery against the first. It is like that. It is difficult. I insist. The apostles themselves consider it difficult. If this is so, it is not worse than to marriage. It is for life. Well, if you cannot accept a marriage for life, 
if your love is eternally a love on trial, and it is not until death, but until you get tired, and there you leave her. Jokingly, it is said that when a man divorces his wife, it is always for 20. The second one has 20 pounds less and 20 years later. It is a joke, and maybe it's a bad joke, but it's often like that. Now, I don't love you anymore, honey, but she has been your partner for all your life. I have given you your children. I have sacrificed for you, for the family. Sometimes I have given up work. Now, I don't love you anymore, honey. I just don't feel anything for you anymore. Or, in the high of hypocrisy in that, you deserve someone nicer than me, someone better than me. And this, of course, can be the other way around as well. We can't disobey the Lord. We cannot fail to listen to His commands. The situation, for example, when there is violence, where living together is not possible, the church has always has a separation. There will be situations when marriage, of course, has never taken place, even if there are children. That is why the church studies carefully and sometimes gives a sentence of marriage nullity, which is not divorce, but to be convinced that for various reasons, there was never a true marriage, a true sacrament. But when there is marriage, we cannot disobey the Lord. We cannot say, you have heard that Jesus Christ say to you, but I say to you, because the words of Jesus Christ are above all the words of anyone. And in anyone, anyone is include everyone. Christ is above anyone. Therefore, the words of Jesus neither go out of fashion, nor can they be neglected or forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord for marriage, for marriage, for marriage, for marriage that have problems. Let us pray for, to the Lord for the fidelity of marriages. Let us pray to the Lord for mutual forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord that they might know how to help each other. If there are, I repeat, reasons for separation, then of course they can live apart even if they are married. If they have separate and they consider that they can seek marriage annulment, they should do so. If they live in a couple or with another person without the nullity of marriage annulment, they should do so. They, But they cannot have communion. They can only receive communion as long as they put into practice the promise of chastity that the Church allows. But if not, they cannot receive communion. We cannot sacrilegiously eat the body of the Lord. When one receives communion, it is because one loves Christ, and the one who loves does not wish to do any harm to the beloved. Do you want to be with the Lord? Do you want to receive communion? What a good feeling. It's wonderful. Of course you need Him. Of course. But you can't pretend that by being with Him, you are hurting Him, because then you don't love Him. How can you want to be with someone at the cost of his hurting him? If you love Him, and that is the reason why you want to be with Him, if you love Him, you will prefer to stay away, at least in the sense of not receiving communion, rather, rather than offend Him. Lord, I love you so much that all through I want to be with you. I don't receive communion because I know it will offend you. Let us, we can to make marriage arrangement with God's grace embracing the cross. Let us not offend Christ more, committing the sin of sacrilege, receiving communion without being able to do so. Let us pray today especially for marriage couples. Amen.